Hello everyone. The title of this video is Finding Inverse Functions and Their Graphs. Now each example from this video is going to be taken directly from a free online textbook at openstacks.org. I'm in their Algebra and Trigonometry text, section 3.7 inverse functions. And I'm under the heading Finding Inverse Functions and Their Graphs. Now each example I do will be either one of the examples from the reading or one of the try it problems from the reading or one of the exercises at the end of the section that's related to this particular objective. All right, so I've got some stuff written out here. Uh, the first example I want to do is example 10 from the reading. So let's take a look at that. And again, you got some reading to do and all this. So here's example 10. It's on uh, finding the inverse of a function using reflection about the identity line. Right, the identity line is y equals x, the graph of y equals x. And I have mentioned this in previous videos about inverses before, that the graphs of inverse functions are just reflections across the line y equals x, or they, what they're calling the identity line. Alright, so I'll make a very rough sketch of the graph they have here. Right, We're given the graph of some function called f in this picture. We're asked to sketch a graph of f inverse. Okay, so what I've done is drawn a very rough sketch of what they've given us, right, the graph of this function called f and it looks like it has the point 1, 0 on it, the point 2, 1, the point 4, 2, and it also looks like, you know, x equals 0, or the y-axis, is a vertical asymptote. I mean, the graph is approaching the y-axis but not actually touching it. Alright, so remember for inverses, it's just a reverse mapping. You just switch everything. X and Y coordinates, right? So, um, you know, again, another way you could say that is switch the X and Y coordinates. Switch X and Y. Uh, the domain of a function becomes the range of the inverse. And the range of a function becomes the domain of the inverse. Right? All this stuff has been mentioned in previous videos I've put out on inverses, if you've been following. So on the graph of f inverse, you know, f has 1, 0, so f inverse would have 0, 1. f has 2, 1, f inverse would have 1, 2 f has 4, 2, f inverse would have 2, 4. And instead of x equals 0, right, the y-axis being a vertical asymptote, y equals 0. Right, switch x with y. The, 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 the x-axis will be a horizontal asymptote. And we'll get a graph like this. And this should be the graph of f inverse. And I'm also going to put up the line y equals x, right, that identity line. That's got 0, 0, and 1, 1, and 2, 2, and all that, right? Here's the line y equals x. And hopefully you can see, I mean, it's a hand drawing, so it's not perfect, but I'm hoping you can see the reflection across this line. Maybe if I tilt it this way. You can see if I reflected the brown graph over the line y equals x, I'd get the pink graph and vice versa. Right. And that is always going to be the case. Uh, the graphs of inverses the 
graphs of inverses are just reflections across this identity line, this line y equals x. And we're going to see that throughout the video. And that's it. That's all we were asked to do in this first one, right? this first example I wanted to show you. Take a graph of a function and again, just switch the x and y coordinates, reverse the mapping, and you get a graph of f inverse, its inverse function. All right, the next example I want to show you is one of the exercises from this section, exercise 29. Right, let's go take a look at that. So scrolling down here, we get to the section 3.7 exercises. I'd like to show you exercise 29. All right, so it says, you know, for the following exercises, use the graph of the one-to-one -one function shown. All right, and it's got to be a one-to-one -one function. All right, if a function is not one-to-one, -one, then the inverse will not be a function. All right, when you switch all the x's and y's up and draw it again. But we want the inverse to be a function, so I need to start off with a function that's one-to-one -one that passes the horizontal line test. And in exercise 29, we're just asked to sketch the graph of f inverse, so it's basically like the last example. All right, so I'm going to do, again, I'm just going to draw a rough sketch of what I'm seeing here, and we'll draw the inverse. Okay, so once again, I've drawn just a rough sketch of what they had for me there in that figure. And it looked like the point 2, 0 was on the graph of f and the point 6, 2. So I plotted those points specifically. And then it was like half a parabola, you know, just the top half of a parabola opening to the right. Um, so for the inverse, very simply, again, ref you're reflecting across the line y equals x, or just switching the x and y coordinates, right, reversing the mapping in f. So if f has the point 2, 0, f inverse will have the point 0, 2. And if f has the point 6, 2, f inverse will have the point 2, 6. Is it 2, 6? And instead of curling like this, you know, all, again, all these points will be reflected across the line. Here's y equals x, and it's just a straight line with a slope of 1 going through the origin. And all these points on the original graph of f are reflected across the line y equals x, and we land over here, and it's, you know, it's like a, per it's still the same shape, right? You're just doing a reflection, so the shape's not changing, it's just flipping over. Um, you know, so if you have a half parabola, it's going to be another half parabola, but instead of opening to the right, you know, it's opening up. And here's the graph of, you know, f inverse. Again, it should be pretty simple, this, in my opinion. If you're given a graph of a function that's, you know, one-to-one, -one, the graph of its inverse should be easy to make. Just switch the x's and y's, reflect across the line y equals x, however you want to say that. All right, and that's it for that example. All right, now the rest, the next example is also taken from the book, but I just wrote out the problem, you know, the problems myself. Uh, so here we're asked to find the inverse function and then graph the function and its inverse. All right, so I've discussed this as well in previous videos on inverses. How do we find the inverse function? Well, the function we're given here is, you know, f of x equals 3 over x minus 2, or y equals 3 over x minus 2, right, where y represents f of x. Then we invert. Now, what I mean by invert is, you know, do what you do in the graphs, you know, switch x with y, y with x. So all the y's in the equation become x, so this is x on the left side now, and all the x's in the equation become y, 3 over y minus 2. But now here, the y represents not f, 
but f inverse, right? We have inverted. And then solve for y. Okay, so here I would multiply both sides by the y minus 2 just to clear the denominators. And if you distribute the x, that'll be xy minus 2x equals 3. Uh, then get all the terms without y to the other side. So we have x times y equals 2x plus 3. And then divide everything by x to get y alone. So y equals 2 plus 3 over x or 3 over x plus 2. There's your inverse. Right? F inver y represents f inverse. Right? f inverse of x equals 2 plus 3 over x. And there's part 1. Right? That's the, the inverse function. Then part 2 is the graphing. All right, now the graph of f, you know, these rational functions usually have asymptotes of some kind horizontal asymptotes, vertical asymptotes, slant asymptotes. So like for f, see the x can't be 2, so there's going to be a, a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. Right. And uh, you know, you got the point, you know, I can plot some points here. If x were 3 in f, uh, the output would be 1 you have the point 3, 1. And you can verify this with some other points, but the graph's going to look like this to the right side here, that it's approaching the vertical asymptote. And then as you get bigger and bigger values of x, the, 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 this will get closer and closer to 0, right? 3 over a million, 3 over a billion minus 2, 3 over a trillion minus 2. It's getting really, really tiny. So the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. And then if I plug in negative 1, you'd get 3 divided by negative 3, that's negative 1 as well, so negative 1, negative 1, and then very similar, the graph will approach the vertical asymptote by going down here, and then, you know, again, you can verify this with some points, point plotting of your own, and then approach the, the x-axis that way. So here's f. All right. And then if I'm plotting f inverse, all right, notice here that in f inverse, x can't be 0. So instead of the x-axis being a horizontal asymptote, now the y-axis is a vertical asymptote. And also, instead of x equals 2 being a vertical asymptote, y equals 2, you'll see, will be a horizontal asymptote. So I'll put in the little dotted line of y equals 2. Uh, f had 3, 1. This has 1, 3. One. This should have one three. All right. So where did I go wrong here? Sorry. Nope. Oh, I'm so sorry. This wouldn't be three one. It'd be three three. My apologies. So, <laughs> oops. All right. So that's a bad graph. I am so sorry. Yeah, you probably were yelling at me at your screen. That's not 3, 1. So let me do that again. I am so very sorry. So again, the xy plane here. Again, for f, x can't be 2. So a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. Uh, and then, yeah, you have 3, 3. 3, 3 is a point on the graph of f. And it would still look like I said earlier, you know, approach the x-axis and approach the vertical asymptote, but more smoothly. Uh, it's approaching, it's going to get closer and closer to x equals 2 here. And then if I plug in negative 1, I will get negative 1. Uh, it's 3 divided by negative 3. So negative 1, negative 1. I'm sorry, 1, negative 1. Why did I make that negative? Ah, I'm, I'm just all over the place today. I'm so sorry. 1, negative 1. And no, it would be 1, negative 3, wouldn't it? Good, good lord. 
If I plug in 1, you have 1 minus 2, that's negative 1. 3 divided by negative 1 is negative 3. All right, so there we go. This is a lot better. 1, negative 3. And the graph is going to do something similar. All right, go approach the x-axis that way and approach the line x equals 2. All right, so there's f. I am so sorry. Now, for f inverse. Again, it's f of x. f inverse equals 2 plus 3 over x. x can't be 0, so again, the y-axis is a vertical asymptote instead of the x-axis being a horizontal. And then instead of x equals 2 being an asymptote, y equals 2 will be an asymptote. All that stuff is the same. And then 3, 3 will be on both of them. And instead of 1, negative 3, should have negative 3, 1. And you can check. You know, if x were 3 in the inverse, 2 plus 3 over 3 is 3. 3, 3 is on that. And if x were negative 3, it would be 2 plus negative 1, which would be 1. So negative 3, 1 would be on it. And then the graphs would be uh, like this. Right, so like that graph reflected across the line y equals x. And then same thing here, this graph reflected across the line y equals x. Right, so here's f inverse. Right, that's, a, that's a rough drawing. That's, that's actually pretty terrible. All right, so what I want to do instead is, you know, and this is okay, but let me show you the graph on Desmos. All right, that's a better, cleaner picture. All right, so I go to that Desmos site, right, desmos.com, free online graphing calculator. Our original graph was y equals, you know, 3 over x minus 2. So there's your graph there. And again, I'll put up the I'll put up the line y equals x so we can see the reflection and I'll make it like a dashed line. And you know, there's the point 3 3, right? Here's the point negative one, negative one, and uh, one negative three. I said was on this, right? There it is. Okay. All right, and then our inverse we said was y equals two plus three over x. All right, and look at that. All right. Much cleaner drawing, and it's much more obvious here. I'm hoping you can see it that the red graph and purple graph are just a reflection across this dotted line. Right, you see how the red graph, you have negative one and a half, zero. The purple graph, you have zero, negative one and a half. Right. Uh, they both have three, three. They both have negative one, negative one. Uh, you know, the purple graph has five, one. The red graph should have one, five. Right. And it does. You know, there, are, there are reflections across the line y equals x, so they, they are definitely inverses. All right, so sorry about the bad hand drawing. All right. But yeah, so finding the inverse, though, the way I did that was correct. And again, th this is a bad hand drawing here. Let me cover it up. Um, and I went to Desmos. And st I mean, I drew a better picture by hand after this, but then, you know, go to Desmos to verify things. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do that one more time. I just got one more example where I'm doing the same thing, where I'm finding find the inverse function and then graph the function and its inverse. And you should see... This time I'll just go straight to Desmos, and you should see that the graphs are reflections across the line y equals x. Alright, so this original function, again, I'm just going to replace f of x with y, right? f of x represents y coordinates here. Alright, then we'll invert. And now the equation becomes x equals 1 over y minus 1. But here, y represents not f, but f inverse. So I'll write that off to the side. And I can just flip both sides. This will be 1 over x equals y minus 1. And then add 1. So y equals 1 over x plus 1. Or, you know, f inverse of x equals 1 over x plus 1. There's our inverse function. All right, and now I'm going to go to the Desmos site and graph both of these, and we're going to see that their graphs are a reflection across the line y equals x. All right, 
So the initial function we got was 1 in the numerator divided by x minus 1 in the denominator, so that purple graph there. And then the inverse we found was 1 over x plus 1. Okay, and look at them. Again, hopefully you can see it. Hopefully it's obvious that these two graphs, the purple and the red, are reflected. You can reflect them across the dotted line and they'll be the same graph. You know, reflect the purple graph across the dotted line, you'll get the red graph. And reflect the red graph across the dotted line, you get the purple graph. And again, check it out, you know, like the red graph has negative 1, 0, and the purple graph has 0, negative 1. Um, you know, the red graph has eh, nothing really nice. Yeah, they both have this, you know, negative 0.618, negative 0.618. You know, points on the line y equals x don't move. And yeah, uh, yeah, so... And hopefully it's clear when you're looking at this, hopefully it's obvious that these two graphs are reflections of one another across the line y equals x. And if that's the case, you know, the x and y coordinates just got switched, and, and that means, you know, they're, they're inverses. Wonderful. And I hope the process of, you know, finding an inverse is simple enough, right? Just change y's to x's, x's to y's, and then solve for the new y, and you'll have a rule, you'll have an equation for the inverse function. Great. Right, and that's it. Um, you know, I'm hoping that watching me go through these four examples in this video help you in some way when you're asked to find an inverse function and graph them on your own. And thank you very much for watching.